What is something a high school teacher told you that you will never forget? My music teacher used to tell me that before you could break the rules, you had to understand them. Jazz in a nutshell. If you hit a wrong note just hit it three times some random guy on reddit. I had a piano teacher who said to me, if you are ever in a band and play the wrong note do not hesitate and just go with. No one pays attention to the pianist. My piano teacher said something, but I wasn't paying attention. A teacher of mine said he would write me a letter of recommendation. But it had been a week or so, and he hadn't gotten back to me yet. I went in a third time to remind him, and I started off with an apology, to which he corrected me, saying don't ever stop advocating for yourself. It's advice I haven't forgotten since. Don't stop advocating for yourself. But please leave me alone for two seconds. The true sign of the economy in a slump is when people stop buying big screen TVs. My economics teacher. 2003. 11th grade app US history. Anytime somebody in power tells you something with a smile. Don't trust a damn thing they said. Whenever they say my fellow Americans they are about to try to get you to do something they'd never do. And there's no such thing as a short war. Especially not for the people in it. Thanks, Mrs. Mellon. And duck cancer. My chemistry teacher told my mom that I would do so much better if I asked questions. I found that this is true in all stages of life. Ask questions. One of the things I say most is I'd rather ask than be wrong. Even if I'm 99% on something. Sometimes I will still ask just to be sure. It's easier to do something right the first time than mess it up and have to go back and fix it. Pay attention to what you pay attention to. If anyone's interested it's called metacognition. It's a really valuable way to build self-awareness and understand how you come to beliefs. Teaching how to think should be integral to our system. Not how you should think, but the basic ability of critical thinking. Questioning. Higher order thinking. Struggled with dyslexia and a learning disability my whole life. English class was heck for me every year. Senior year my lead teacher read some short story that was required of me and said, What the duck are you doing here? You are starting in my app lead class starting tomorrow. I passed the app test and my entire life really began because he believed in me. I'm now a high school teacher and while not as great as him, really think I'm doing good work. Class camp. We are out walking a trail to the next campsite, carrying our lives in our packs. I was not in great physical shape and was well back in the rear. So it's basically just me and one teacher to make sure no one fell too far back. We came to a part where a branch had fallen across the trail, big enough to be an effort to move it, but not so large that it couldn't have been moved by any of the 30 other students and teachers that had already walked around it. Without even thinking about it, I grabbed the branch and tossed it to the side of the path. The teacher said to me 30 boys walked past that branch. It took one man to move it, and he made life easier for every person after him. It became a personal motto. Of sorts make it easier for the people who come after you. Although when you do a good job, the person who comes after you is usually also you. Reminds me of the poem called The Bridge Builder Link. RG Poems 52700 to The Bridge Builder. Coming up to our final year 12th exams. My maths teacher handed out an article on the most common things people said on their deathbed. She said no one wished they had worked longer hours, that they had spent more time at work than with their loved ones. If we didn't get the grades we wanted, that's okay, because there'll be a back doors to where we wanted to go. Failure is okay, it's only a minor setback. What's important is having a good balance between work studies, family friends and our own hobbies interest. I'm 32 and at a crossroads in life right now. I can either keep working this shit plastic factory job that's toxic in more way than one but pays well. Or I can say duck it and accept the position at Target that I applied for so I can work less hours, make less money, but hopefully have a better schedule for going back to school and finally doing something with my life. Reading this I think I need to make that change. Whenever my teacher said anything controversial that he didn't want repeated, he would preface it with don't quote me on this because I'll just deny it. I still use that. One of the coolest, 
more laid back teachers I had, was straight up like, if you try to snitch on me, I control your grades. Snitches get, F's, punks get flunks. My partner had a high school teacher that would walk through the busy hallways at school shouting hot coffee, hot coffee while holding an empty mug. He just wanted people to get out of his way and it always worked. In high school I used to wear a trench coat and was one of the larger kids at the school. I had a French teacher who used to follow me down the halls because the crowds used to part for me and she could get around quicker following me because of it. That our town was a shithole and the best advice he could give us was to move out and live elsewhere. Decades later, he was correct. My grandfather told me the college in this town is excellent, unless you grew up here. My favorite math teacher had a philosophy about us understanding how to get to formulas instead of memorizing them. Basically if we memorize them, we were gonna remember them wrong, and would never be the wiser, because we thought we remembered it. My Ekin prof said the same thing and it's the truth. Gotta be able to apply that knowledge to grass and real life examples. Our high school chemistry teacher said, Remember a warm test tube or Bunsen burner are no substitutes for a satisfying relationship. And at that age I would not have had any idea what he really meant. There's more to life than warm and round. That I wasn't stupid, just lazy, changed my life. That's what my stepdad tells me then later proceeds to call me a stupid idiot laughing my butt off. My high school biology teacher, on the end of every quiz or exam, would put a give away point question. The question was always the same science is A exciting, B interesting, C A challenge, D all of the above, no matter what you marked you got the point. However, since this was on every exam, the saying was sandblasted into my long term memory. This led to me always somehow muttering this whenever I was taking an exam in university substituting the word science with whatever necessary. Then it led to me muttering it whenever I was dealing with something stressful. Now it has become a fallback whenever I run into a life roadblock and everything is simply designated A exciting, B interesting, C A challenge, D all of the above. It's simple but it helps keep me from being too negative. I'm saving this comment because I want my kids to have this mentality too. Maybe I'll make a poster. My high school baseball coach sociology teacher always used to say those who are prepared create their own luck before exams. This is a true life lesson. Luck favors the prepared. Luck is what happens when preparation and calamity collide. I had an English teacher my freshman year of high school who was one of the rare adults that treated all of his students with respect while at the same time challenging us to do better. I distinctly remember him telling our class, you are not as mature as you think you are, but you are more mature than your parents give you credit for. He also told us about an agreement rule he had with his own kids. He understood how hard it was for kids to do the right thing in the face of peer pressure. So he had told his kids that if they were ever in a situation underage drinking, drugs, whatever where they knew they shouldn't be, they could call and using an previously agreed upon cod board that was banal and unsuspicious, he would know he needed to go get them and be the bad guy. He would show up, Uncle Buck style, and get them out of wherever they were. This would allow them to save face with their friends and there would be no consequences for being the situation in the first place. He also told us about an agreement rule he had with his own kids. He understood how hard it was for kids to do the right thing in the face of peer pressure. My parents had two parts to this. The first was that my dad was always willing to be the bad guy. We could always blame him for not being able to do something we didn't want to do. The second was that no matter what, if we ever felt uncomfortable, we could call them at any point of the night and ask to be taken home. There would be no punishment, even if it was a situation where we'd done something like sneaking out to go to a party we actually were told not to go to. As they said roughly we'd rather be silently disappointed in you and really tired on a work day than have to attend your funeral. My parents always said we'd much rather get a call from you in the middle of the night than from the hospital. My parents always said, I almost wish you spent your weekends partying instead of playing RuneScape. Leave your verbal guns at the door. This was the HS football coach's first words teaching sex ed at my high school. 
He used the metaphor of the old American West, where cowboys would leave their guns at the door when they entered a saloon to drink so nobody would get killed in a drunken outburst. He said we'd talk about a lot of topics that might make us feel uncomfortable and tempted to make a joke at someone else's expense to break the tension. He asked us to leave our verbal guns at the door so everyone could feel comfortable asking honest questions. This was back in the late 80s. He was way ahead of his time. That's cool. Did it work? I'll go ahead and be the only teacher responding to this question. I wasn't there, obviously. But when you set kids up like this it usually works. Nobody actually wants to be the jerk that gets the conversation shut down when an adult crosses the taboo and is finally willing to talk to them honestly about sex and answer those questions that have been burning in the backs of their minds. The one time I had to start to shut down a class conversation about sex because of behavior the kids yelled at the kid who was acting out and said, No. 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 Mrs. Wardrobe. We're being so mature. We're being so mature. We can do this. Shut up Johnny. And we were able to continue on. Kids are better than they seem when you're a kid. If you're ever living in poverty a block of cheese and a loaf of bread can feed you for days. Beans and rice gang. 2005 a teacher said intelligence of the future will not be defined by how well you know one skill, but instead how well you can find information and decide for what information is good and bad. One of my high school teachers said the same thing. A smart person doesn't always know the answer to the question, but he knows where to find it or something along those lines. That's honestly true about a lot of fields. Take physics for example. Ask a physics question and even the most intelligent physicist likely won't know the answer immediately. But they'll know exactly what books to consult and what formulas to use to find the answer. Same with medicine. A doctor may not remember literally every single drug. But they are more than capable of knowing exactly where to look for the right information and having complete trust in the sources they use. Not as inspiring as the others, but I always found it funny how my teacher would say 90 degrees instead of sit up straight. They should have said too. What a chump. In my childhood only one person ever tackled my mother about her abuse of me and my siblings. It was parents day and my bitch of a mother, as usual, turned up to take the credit for my being top of the class again. At one point there was just me, my bitch of a mother, and Mrs. Soames physics teacher in the lab. Mrs. Soames quite calmly challenged her, saying Mrs. XXXXX, why do you treat Tom Stotty the way you do? She's a good girl and doesn't deserve it. To my astonishment, my evil bitch of a mother was speechless. No one had ever confronted her before, and she just didn't know where to put herself. It was easy for the other teachers and pupils to make snide, patronizing remarks about this cow to me. A 13 year old girl isn't in a position to do anything about it, and I'm guessing they were trying to ease their consciences about the fact that they were too cowardly to intervene. But Mrs. Sums has been a role model for me ever since, and an unforgettable example of those people brave enough to tackle a bully in the presence of their victim. To have someone stand by you when you are vulnerable and make their support for you clear I can't tell you how that changed my view of other people. My freshman year history teacher told us first day of school about how he went to college with Bill Gates. Said he was one of the people that Bill asked to invest in his startup. He had declined. And here I'm teaching history class to high schoolers. In 1974 I was told, taught that the planet Mercury had a tidally locked orbit around the Sunday, that one side of the planet faced the sun all the time. It's not true. Mercury's true orbit and rotational periods were worked out in 1965. My music teacher, when I spent a large length of time skipping school due to various reasons. She had phoned me after spending hours tracking a way to contact me because she was worried. I'm not phoning to tell you off. I'm phoning to make sure you're okay. You don't have to go to the classes you don't like. Your exam is on wed and I'm phoning to let you know. No matter what I know that you'd still be practicing because you're a bright student and I know you'll go far, no matter what you choose to do. Alcohol is a byproduct by productive single cell organisms. It's what they shit out. I had a friend that was in the same history class as me and she had a huge crush on the teacher. 
She was also salutatorian of our class and literally voted most likely to succeed. I graduated with barely a 3.0. She and I both had our history teacher sign our yearbooks, and in mine he wrote I'm going to miss our banter in class. You are a highly intelligent individual. In my friend's yearbook he wrote keep on trucking. I never felt particularly competitive with my friend. But that little bit of irony really changed the way I understood how people view intelligence. My English teacher in grade 6 put A and lot on two separate pieces of paper and taped them to opposite walls on the classroom. Then she got a student to run from A to lot while yelling with them AAAAAAAAA gets to other side lure to teach us that they were separate and that a lot is incorrect. I have never forgotten and can still picture it as if it were yesterday it's been 12 years. I faked my way through 4th and 5th grade math. I never understood how to do long division but managed to hide that from the teachers and answer test questions by reverse multiplication basically guess a number and multiply it out and see how close I would get and keep doing it until I got the answer. My 6th grade math teacher figured out that I was faking and had no idea how to actually divide anything. She had me come in one afternoon to help with cleaning the erasers all the kids fought for this privilege. So I was thrilled. Sat me down and tutored me until I grasped the concept. Bless you, Mrs. Gillespie.